Okay, hey folks, Mark Locklear here. Um, today we'll be talking about uh, Chapter 11, how to work with arrays. Uh, we've gotten through inheritance at this point. Uh, I appreciate the hard work there. You know, inheritance, again, just to kind of re reiterate what I mentioned in the last session, uh, it can be a difficult concept to grasp. Um, I, I, I may have mentioned this before, I haven't worked a ton with in inheritance. Normally it's used on very large inter enterprise applications. Uh, and ones where maybe you're sharing uh, code development and classes with a number of other developers. So I haven't specifically worked on uh, any projects that that large. But again, it's just it's one of those things you need to know about in your programming career. You may or may not encounter it. Just again, depending on the size of the applications that you you, you work with. So let's talk about arrays. So arrays is uh. So as a developer, arrays are going to be near and dear to to your heart. I mean, they're they're really an indispensable um, tool in in your, your toolkit. And whether you program in Java, Ruby, Python, really every language um, has arrays and has some way to deal with data. And there's really no other way around it. It's one of those sort of basic data structures that you just you have to have if you're going to deal with data. So I mean essentially an array, if you just had to explain it, an array is a, it's an object that contains one or more items and generally we call those items elements. So you can kind of think of it as a, a bucket or maybe a file cabinet and then slots inside that file cabinet. G generally in Java these are going to be all of the same data types. So you're going to create an array of strings or an array of ints or an array of doubles and all of those uh, all of the elements in that array are going to be the same. Uh, in other languages, and again, we've talked about Java being a strongly typed language. So the reason uh, those arrays are all the same type is because because it's a strongly typed language. And some other loosely typed languages, uh, you can sort of mix and match um, um, data types inside individual elements of an uh, array. But for the purposes of Java, uh, each element is going to be of the same data type. Um, so I think what we'll do today is, if you notice on the screen here, I've got uh, the future value app. This is um, exercise 11.2. And uh, I'm just going to sort of walk you through the code on how to solve this and just kind of talk about some things uh, as we work through it. So I'm just going to read kind of what we got in uh, what they want us to do for the exercise. So it says, uh, this, this, this exercise guides you through the process of adding a rectangular array to the future value application. This array will store values of up to 10 calculations. Uh, when the program ends, it will print a summary of those calculations that look something like this. And I'm looking at the, the picture there on page 361. So if we look at the example start, if I run this, just so we can see um, what our results are. So um, the monthly investment is going to be 100. Let's do 8%, and we'll do it for one year. So we see we get about $1,200. And then let's put another entry in. We'll do, uh, we'll do 200 at 8% for one year. And then if we, once we quit, we see the program just ends. And our, our goal, the requirements here ask us to, uh, when we say no, to actually quit the program, that we get a list of all the calculations we've done up to that point. And in this case, it's going to be up to, to 10. So let's just sort of walk through these one at a time and let's look at some, some code. So uh, number one there says open project 11.2. Uh, I've got that done. Now it says uh, declare variables at the beginning of the main method for a row counter and a rectangular array of strings that provides for 10 rows and four columns. And I'm just going to paste that code in. So notice what we've got here. Um, so this row, we'll see how we'll see what that's going to do for us later. But essentially, that's going to um, each time we enter a set of values for an and uh, for a future value or for a particular investment, that's the monthly investment, the interest rate in the number of years. Uh, we're going to store each one of those calculations in an array. Um, in this case, if you notice here, we're we're creating this array called uh, called calculations. So our our syntax here is first the, the type. Notice these, these these are going to be strings. 
um, and then and we could probably do ints or doubles here if we wanted to, but in this case we're going to do strings, and then the name of the array, in this case calculations, and then we've got this set of double brackets here, and that uh, you do a set of double brackets for each, um, whether it's a singular array or a rectangular uh, array. In this case, it's going to be rectangular because we're doing 10 columns and then four elements in each column. If we were just doing 10 columns, you know, we would do something like this, something like like that. Okay, but we're doing. So we're doing 10 columns, four elements in each column, okay? So we've set up our variables there. So now if we move down, and we can run this application again looking for any any errors or squiggly lines. Now notice I do have a gray squiggly line. That just means that this variable hasn't been used yet. Um, so now if we get into the main method of our application, Really, we can leave everything the same because we want that current output to stay the same. But the other thing, the thing we're going to add is each time we run a particular investment, we need to store that in an element of an array. So I'm going to paste this in so we can kind of see what this looks like. So notice what I'm doing is after we do the normal print line of the individual results, we're going to take and store that in that particular rows array. So notice we're using the row uh, variable here, and that's our, our row count. And then notice this is where we're incrementing that each time. So each time we enter a set of investment values, that row is being incremented one time. Also notice another thing, and uh, well, notice another thing here. Notice we start with zero when counting the elements of an array. That's, uh, that can be a common mistake generally if we think that we need, you know, in this case we said we needed an array of, of each row has four elements. In our mind we might be thinking one, two, three, four, but remember arrays always start with zero and that's kind of a general, that's across the board no matter what language you use and that's in general any kind of math function you're doing in in any programming language you can always start with zero so to get four elements in the array we do zero through three here okay and so notice what we're doing for each of these array or for each of these elements we're putting the monthly investment in one we're putting the interest rate in another we're putting the the years in the the third element and then we're actually putting the formatted value or the future value in this final fourth element. And so again, that's our logic. Now we're not displaying any, any of this yet. In fact, if I run this, everything should should run. $100 a month, 8% for one year. And let's go ahead and put a second one in. So we'll do 200 a month for uh, at 2% interest for two years maybe. And then say no and notice we don't get an output hasn't changed any basically because we're not outputting this data yet but notice what we're doing here before we started the goal was to take each one of these calculations like for instance here we've got two and we just we need to store this somewhere so at the end so here's one set here and that was a hundred dollars a month eight percent for one year gives us the future values twelve hundred our second our second investment was 200 a month, 2% for two years was 4,000. Um, we, we sort of need a place to store that um, until the end of the program and then we can print it all out. Now we haven't covered input output yet, we'll do that. We, we could store this out to a text file or to a database, but this is really not, you know, this is really not persistent data. It's not something we need to store. We only need to store it for the length uh, that the pro program runs. And so what that means is it's going to be stored in the computer's memory. So that's what arrays do for us. It just kind of gives us a holding place uh, where we can store values until we use them at some point. But the idea here, this is this is, uh, this is is sort of static data. Once the program ends, then we don't have any access to it. it, it it's it, it's gone. So that's often a scenario where arrays are used. Okay, and so now let's print out the results 
of this. So let's come back down here. So this is going to be after the normal print line statement. I'm going to print a chunk of code. I'm going to insert a chunk of code here and we'll, we'll walk through it. So, so now what we do is we just have a couple of print line statements and then notice I'm doing uh, uh, monthly investment rate years and future value and I've got some 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 tabs there to sort of format that text and then notice I've got this nested for loop here and this is nested for loops can be a challenge I think we, we used them when we covered for loops earlier in, in the class but notice what we're doing here uh, and this is going to be very common when you're dealing with a two-dimensional or maybe even beyond that a three or four dimensional array where you've got these nested loops for each for each um, uh, for each dimension of the array you're going to have a for loop there so this is a two dimensional array so we've got a two for four loops a, 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 a two nested if you will for loop so the, the first one uh, again we're, we're counting by row so for each row we want to display this output and then this is kind of a convention to use I and, and, and J um, that's just sort of the convention not only in Java but other pro programming languages generally in for loops you start with, with I if we add a third nested loop here we would use k but in this in this case we're looping through i and then we're also and so i again is our 10 is the 10 elements we've got and then j is going to be our four and notice we've got less than four here um, and so that and then we're going to loop through each elements each each of the four elements in in uh, each of the array um, so let's just print this let's uh, let's Let's run this and just see what we've got here. So I'm going to say $100 a month, 8% interest for one year, and then we'll say yes. So I've just what's happened there is I've just stored these values in that array. I could run the debugger now if I wanted to, and we could look at the first element in that array, and the four elements would have 100, 8, 1, and then this this $1,200. So that's in the first element. So now I'm going to say yes and now we'll do say 10% interest or, or I'm sorry uh, 10 ten dollars a month for let's say 10% interest for one year. Okay and now when I say no so notice the output we get here again we've stored each of those values here's the 100, 8, 1 and 1200 and then here's the other values but again you can hopefully you're kind of warming up the idea that um, arrays are just kind of a temporary placeholder that this data is being stored in memory and it gives us uh, the ability to um, do different calculations and functions based on um, you know based on what the requirements of our application is just real quick too let me say a few words about you know arrays this odd this idea of object oriented programming so arrays are objects and because they are we get all kinds of neat little um, neat little functions that Java gives us to be able to use and I'm looking on page 349 and it just gives you an example of just a few of those you know fill equals copy of copy of range and in fact let's see let's see if we can look at so calculations is our array so let's just see if I do calculations dot so notice here again just like we've done with other uh, we just finished up uh, in chapter 7 we did object oriented when we created a new, a new class remember we could do we could instantiate a uh, we could instantiate a new object from that class and then if we just type the name of the object and then the dot operator it would give us all the methods that were associated with it well the same thing has happened here I mean again by by by, um, by creating a new array we've got a Java object and because it's an object sort of for free Java gives us uh, certain methods that are associated with it so again if I type dot I can do dot dot length that's going to give us the length of the uh, the, the length of the array I can do clone equals and then I've, so I've got all these things that are sort of available to us there now notice some of these aren't the some of the ones we see on 349 are not available here and that that's based on in this case we've got a string if we did an int if our array was an int we would have uh, we would have some different methods that would be available 
to us. So just kind of know that uh, just kind of know that that's available to us there. Okay, so I think that's all I've got on uh, arrays there. There, you know, arrays is, is a it's it's a very it's a large topic, and we could probably spend two or three weeks on it if we we wanted to. You know, another good I think what I'll do is I'll include in the notes uh, in YouTube on the screencast. Uh, I've got a couple of. Uh, there's a website that does a good example of, and we're not doing it here, but if you really want to sort of stretch your uh, abilities, you can look at exercise 411, kind of the classic computer science 101 exercise for arrays is working with a deck of cards and it, more specifically uh, creating a game of black blackjack. Um, that, 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 that problem, the problem of creating a card game is very well suited to arrays. Uh, you've got a set deck of cards, so you've got, um, um, you know, so you've got you've got a set of face cards, a set of numbers, and then you've also uh, got, you know, hearts, spades, and the different card types in there. So that's sort of the classic exercise um, that, that, that you do as, as a, as a, uh, as an exercise for working with arrays. So if you want to challenge yourself, I would encourage you to either maybe do exercise 411 or like I say, I'll paste an example in the book and they've actually got the code for the solution there. So, okay, that, that's all I've got for now. Um, if, you have, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.